classical expression for energy. Now, when you do special relativity, you see that the correct expression for energy would be something like square root of M2C4 plus P2C2. That's the kinetic energy for a relativistic particle. The Schrodinger, the Dirac equation is a quantum equation that leads to this dispersion relation. But now, if you look at speeds which are much slower than the speed of light, you should recover this result. And this is exa exactly what the next verse is about. <laughs> so if I'm considering speeds which are much slower than the velocity of light, what I'm having is this. Well, actually, this is not the Schrodinger equation, right? This is the Schrodinger equation for a free particle. I think if we have just a little bit before. What do you have? Okay, this is, this is the direct equation. <laughs> So what is the assumption here? The assumption is that the Hamiltonian <laughs> is just p squared divided by 2 m. So here, he's neglecting uh, sure. any kind of potential, for instance. Because potential will come in the next verse. So now if I add some additional potential, what am I getting? I'm getting a confinement. And if I'm getting a confinement, I will have discrete energy law. <laughs> Remember this drawing? <laughs> you see that photon going out? Like, this guy is like really good. He figured <laughs> energy conversion. That's, that's energy conservation. You have the, the electron coming in with a kinetic energy. If the electron remains around the proton, somehow this kinetic energy has to go somewhere. Where it's going, that's a photon being emitted. Oh, okay. That's the inverse of photoionization. If you do it the other way around, you have a photon getting in, and you have the electron catching the photon and going away. This would be photo photoionization. So that's the inverse process. <laughs> And you see that arrow? That's the spin. Spin. So we've not discussed about orbitals. Orbitals is, is the spatial distribution of the wave function. We discussed about the value of the energy, not how the particle would distribute in space. But each of the energy that we found corresponds to such a such an orbital. What is happening here? You have two separate systems, you bring them closer together, you leave the degeneracy, it means you have one state lower in energy, one state higher in energy. A state lower in energy means it's something more stable. What does it mean when two particles are getting close together and the, the energy is going down? It means that the particle would better be close than far away. And that's called an electric bounding. That's a common um, bound. down in the ground state, this is the all the exclusion principle. Of course you have one up, one down. You cannot have two up or two downs because it's the same state. And they are fermions. This means they follow the Fermi-Dirac distribution. 
Well, that's pretty much basic counting. Uh, you have four states, and you have two elections per state. Then you're totally going to have eight elections in there. And that's just chemists playing with higher energy levels. But it's pretty much really the same thing as what we discussed so far. So this is more about how chemists are talking about molecular bound. But it's pretty much the same thing as what we did. The difference is he's talking about five atoms. And we talk about millions of atoms in a lattice. So somehow we did something way more complicated than that. Now this starts to look like a crystal. You see? You've got that regular shape, you've got one atom at each side, and you have electrons which are able to jump from one atom to the other. And what happens when you do this is that the electron would rather delocalize over the whole states rather than remain on any single atom. So when you put these atoms together, they will put their electrons, uh, they will share their electrons, and the electrons will be delocalized over all sites. And so you don't represent electrons as being localized somewhere, you represent them as being delocalized over the whole brain. I think that would be basically bands for us, right? This would be thing in one configuration or in another configuration that would be two energy bands. And the difference between this small amount of six atoms and the crystals that we've been looking at is that on top of that we have to include momentum. So we have an additional degree of freedom and we need two quantities to describe the particles, the band and the momentum. Come on with me, baby, come on. 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 The main difference between this and crystals that we've been studying is that this does not have the lattice structure that we discussed. It does not have that nice symmetric and, and periodic properties. So most of the results that we derived here that come from the symmetries cannot be applied straightforwardly. But you still have the same kind of notions that the electrons can be delocalized of the most of the molecule at the same time. So you're going to have kind of similar notions, but the notion of momentum will not be the same because the momentum was really resulting from the symmetry of the lattice in the first place. Um, but if you, do, if you do organic semiconductors, this is the kind of things that you will be dealing with. Thank you and good luck for the team program.